about this uh, this cow. This is Dakota. She's sick and her health is not great. This is going to be the kind of challenges. You can't single them out. Um, I think pulling bison uh, by themselves is not good. It even causes more stress. She's already under stress. So we can't separate her by herself. I know some of you are probably like, well, just separate her by herself and, and feed her every day. Well, it causes more stress on bison when you separate them and they're singled out. These are very social animals and they gotta be with their family and they gotta be with the herd. So we'll see how it goes. Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back. So we have ourselves a challenge. We've got a sick cow. Um, it's one of my um, quapaw uh, cows, and she's. Um, I think she's being pulled down by the calf a little bit. It's about time to to separate them. We don't have our handling system uh, quite done yet. Still waiting on some. Uh, waiting on the actual squeeze chute to, to be done, getting that crash gate put on the front. So um, once we get that done, we'll, we'll pretty much have all the pieces we need. So in the meantime, we can't necessarily work them through the handling system quite yet. So I'm gonna have to do a some things different because of that. Um, you know, just getting, just getting started here and don't quite have all the, the system yet. But uh, so, with one of the, our cows, she's not, she just doesn't look very good, and you can just tell when something's wrong with them. So, I called Doc, called my vet, Doc Parsons, and um, explained what was going on, and he said, well, come get, come get some antibiotics. All right, so one of the cows that I'm gonna take care of is right here. Um, she's lost, she's lost a ton of weight. Um, these are the quapaw heifers, um, my two bred heifers that I had last year and that had babies now, and, uh, She's just lost some weight and doesn't look very good. And um, you can tell on these bison real quick when their body starts to change. So we're gonna get her taken care of and it's gonna be a challenging process, but um, you know, since we don't have a handing system yet, we gotta get this done. And um, I don't like her being stressed out maybe from <clears throat> Teddy, her calf. And so we're gonna try to get her taken care of and then I'm gonna try to separate these calves and put them in a smaller lot and start the weaning process um, so we got some challenges ahead but um, we'll end up face them and and get through them stuff we got to do to make the herd better Dunbar he's always getting into something <laughs> okay so what I got here as I've got my Got some sweet feed here and then i have um this antibiotic i'm not exactly sure the name of it um when uh, the vet tells you what to do and uh when the bison guy tells you what to do you just do it and um so that's what we're going to do tell me get about a tablespoon of a heaping tablespoon of this stuff so i'm going to pour it in there and um, mix it up here in the sweet feed and I'm going to do my regular routine feeding and what um, this heifer or what this cow does is um, they always eat together. The two quapaw heifers always eat together and um, the calves eat with them. But I'm going to try a little trick and see if I can get her to um, get this food just by herself. We're the only one that really wants her to eat this. Uh, the only bison eat this. It wouldn't hurt if the other ones ate this i mean um you know it's an antibiotic they all need a little bit of that every now and then just to fight all the bacteria going on um and uh so just for their own health but um this is something that we um you know that you would handle normally through a shoot but we don't have that quite yet so we've got to do the best we can 
and um, so we're gonna get this going and try to get her feeling better. So we got her separated. What well, it actually kind of worked out pretty nice, but I'm just worried about this uh, this cow. This is Dakota, and there's Teddy with her. Um, luckily, got them separated, and this is one of our new feed bins that's divided. So I put her feet on one side, and um, this is going to be the kind of challenges. Um, you know, the doc, the or our doc, the vet said it needed to be in her feed. You know, every every feeding and so we feed in the mornings and we feed in the evenings so we really need to kind of get the calf off of her i think the calf is pulling you know her down some i think that's causing some stress um these calves are about six or seven months you're you know old and uh it's about time to wean them so we may go ahead and separate the calves but then also you've got to worry about um you know her you can't single them out um i think pulling bison um, by themselves is not good it even causes more stress she's already under stress because she's she's sick and her health is not great so we can't separate her by herself i know some of you are probably like well just separate her by herself and and feed her every day well it causes more stress on bison when you separate them and they're singled out these are very social animals and they got to be with their family they got to be with the herd and so it's definitely a challenge. We don't have the right setup quite yet to, to put her with certain animals um, because you'd be dividing the herd up. And when you do that, you, you change a lot of things. So um, hopefully she, uh, we can do this. My stepdad, Kevin, who takes care of him um, when I can't, uh, it'll be a challenge for him to, to feed him every day and to feed her um, kind of by herself. And that's who we're focused on and getting that antibiotic in her so we'll see how she does with it she's eating so far she's eating pretty well um, but we'll see how it goes and um, hopefully she will keep her keep her eating this sweet feed um, it's, it is a sweet feed doc told me to mix, uh, to mix it with molasses and so that's what i gave her it's a new feed for her um, and so i mixed it with our normal four-way blend uh, just to kind of blend it in some and hopefully she's she's eating some of it and uh, we'll check it whenever she's done so we'll see how it goes Maya get out
How are you doing, buddy? You're all hyped up. He wants out. Wow. So you can kind of see some of the sad process of this is you've got um, Chaske right here, our firstborn, and you've got um, Quapaw. Um, they're talking back and forth, and I'm sure it's it's kind of sad to see them here, you know, uh, with the fence between them, and they're not used to that. And so this is the process uh, we're gonna have to go through. It's it's tough. It's tough for them, um, but. You know, it, it's part of this business, and uh, you know, unfortunately, you have to do this to 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 get the mom to you know keep taking care of herself, and this gives the calf a chance to to grow um, and um, mature and, and do his own thing, and mom can move on and and um, be able to breed and have another calf uh, successfully, so we can continue to grow our herd. And uh, this is just a process of. Um, when you have a, a bison farm and, and you're trying to do things the right way. So here it is. All right, guys, so um, you know I've been talking to you about my sick um, cow, Dakota. And so what we did is you saw me separate uh, the two calves and Dakota. She's sick, she's not doing very good. I just went ahead and pulled the trigger. I took the day off and I'm going to load her up with the two calves because they've never been worked before it. And we need, we're gonna go ahead and wean them. So we're gonna load these, them up and we are gonna take them to our vet up in Stratford, Doc Parsons, my buffalo guy, a bison guy. And um, so luckily I have help today. I have a sister DJ from Arms Family Homestead to help me. Everybody's working today. And um, so luckily I can get her to come, come help me. And so I'm gonna load them up and we're gonna go uh, see what's wrong with her and get her taken care of.
crazy, isn't it? Yeah. So today I learned what anaplasmosis is, um, which is something that attacks um, the red blood cells of, of, of what I understand any livestock animal, and it comes from horseflies. Well, we got the cow back, and we got the two bulls back, and um, we, got, we got in what we needed to get in. Um, it's, uh, I just felt like, you know, she, she started looking pretty rough and um, I just felt like I needed to take her and so that's what that's what uh, we did so luckily enough you know it's it's during the day um, I had to take off work I just feel like um, she's too good of a cow and um, uh, we had to get her taken care of and I just don't want to risk it anymore um, we're sc still feeding her that antibiotics uh, mixing in her feed for but um, other than that you know, we took him up to Doc Parsons and we got him taken care of. So the cool thing is uh, we got to take the bulls and got to work them as well. And they got their first handling. And when I say work, um, you kind of saw that process a little bit of running through the squeeze chute and they're getting their first set of worming. They're getting their antibiotics and vaccinations um, to fight off any of that bad stuff going on inside of them uh, that they may pick up. So let me tell you a little bit about what I learned today. So what I did learn is there is a horse fly that carries um, something uh, that gets into the an animal system. Can be livestock, could be deer in that case is my understanding. And uh, a horse fly bites them, ingests them, uh, you know, whatever they're carrying, it gets in a bison system in this case, and um, it kills the red blood cells, it attacks the red blood cells. And so uh, the vaccinations that Dakota got today, um, our cow, um, was a bunch of antibiotics. Um, Doc Parsons put a bunch of antibiotics in her, and um, we went ahead and wormed her, got her taken care of, and we're going to keep feeding her, uh, mixing in some of that antibiotics into her feed. And he said we should see some changes in her gaining some weight back in about two to three weeks. Um, so she's going to be singled out here with the two calves for a little bit um, because we're trying to start the weaning process with them as well. 
obviously won't work with her baby because he's still in here with her but that's okay um you know she should get better hopefully in about a month and then we'll be able to we'll be able to uh send her back out with the herd you can tell the herd is is staying really close and you know this is a tight-knit family and and they want to be around each other so they're staying really close but um you know some some learning today uh which is good you know this is part of the process it is is learning about these animals learning um you know you just can't just let these animals go and people don't understand that you think just you just let these bison go and 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 they'll take care of themselves well they do take care of themselves but you know like i've told you several times we're not on thousands of acres and even on the big ranches and the big private places that have bison they still gotta they still have to work them they still have to vaccinate them they vaccinate them once or twice a year so that these animals can thrive and um you know there is some you have to have some human intervention with these animals and we're trying to grow the population and obviously i want to have a healthy herd so that we can grow as well and so there's things like this that you have to do and today um i didn't want to risk it anymore and so we took dakota up there to get her taken care of and we got the process going with those two calves uh, getting their first set of worming and, and antibiotics um, so that uh, they're healthy and that's what we want and we want our herd to grow um, and, and it's all about learning we've got um, a, you know a horsefly a simple horsefly can cause problems like that and apparently it's only in this sort of area it's, it's everything from I-40, which runs right through the middle of Oklahoma, east and west, goes out to Amarillo and Fort Smith. And then um, he said east of I-35. Well, that's where we're located is east of I-35. And south of I-40, he said that's where the, um, some of this problems occur. And so um, that's, what, that's what we're dealing with. And this is part of raising animals. And it may not just be bison. It, it could be other animals as well. So... Uh, I hope you uh, have enjoyed the video. I know, um, you know, this is just part of it and you've got to deal with these things. And in any livestock industry, anytime you own animals, stuff may randomly happen and you got to get your animals taken care of. And so luckily I'm able to do that. My sister helped me out today and lucky um, my awesome sister DJ helped me out and she filmed a lot of it for me because it's really hard to film uh, when you're dealing with bison and you guys see me out in the pens with them and stuff all the time. But <clears throat> uh it's really helpful to have people like her and uh, she helped work them and you know she's used to working goats and and alpacas now so it's a little bit different when you're working with those animals so um it's a a new uh something new for her today uh i don't think she knew what she was getting into but it all went really smooth and we can't complain so uh thank you guys for following um herds hanging out together i hate having to put them in this pen alone by themselves but that gives us a chance for her to eat that feed. We can watch her and we can get some weight on those calves too as well because they're separated from the main herd. So there's some good things out of it and um, we're just gonna keep an eye on her, keep watching her and hopefully she, uh, she makes the turn in the right direction. So thank you guys, stay tuned with us and I appreciate all the, uh, the, the positive comments you guys leave, uh, I really appreciate it. And Hey guys, it's Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back. So what we've got to do today is Doc called from Stratford, a bison guy, and the crash gate is done on the front of our um, squeeze chute that we bought back in November. I know it's been a while, but Doc is a busy guy, and um, you know he was building that crash gate for us to put on the 
in front of this sweet shoot that we need. So he's got it done. We're gonna go get it. And then also, um, you know what? It's middle of the day. I'm gonna let the video camera go and just see how these bison, um, you know, what do they do in the middle of the day? Um, I'm, I'm usually never here in the middle of the day. I'm usually, it's in the mornings or the evenings. Um, so, you know, they're pretty active in the morning as evenings, but I think in the middle of the day, I think they're just relaxing. So I'm just gonna let the camera roll and see what you guys think. Hey, looky there. We've got the crash gate right here on the front. Doc Parsons at a Stratford Animal Clinic. Um, in Stratford, Oklahoma, a bison guy, he got us taken care of. He got us a nice big crash gate that we're going to use. Got to have this so those bison come through here. They're going to pump the brakes on when they hit this. So um, we're going to take this back home and get her set up and ready. Kind of the last piece to the whole um, bison setup uh, so we can work these animals at our own farm in sulfur. Uh, stay tuned with us guys. So now we got our crash gate. We've got our squeeze back at home and the crash gate is on. So Doc Parsons, uh, a bison guy, did a great job on this. So now we'll be able to work bison um, here. And this, swivel across. let them out it's gonna be a pretty good system so anytime you have these bison handling systems you got to have this crash gate on uh, bison operate a little bit different than cattle do and um, when they come through this head gate they've got to be able to slow down um, because they'd like to once they see that tunnel they see that light they want to run through it and so that's what this crash gate is for is to slow them down uh, when they're coming through this squeeze chute. So um, kind of the last piece that we needed and I have that squeeze chute on and to operate the bison smoothly whenever we work them and uh, to try to keep them safe as possible um, and get them worked and get them taken care of. We're gonna set this on our platform um, on the foundation, concrete foundation, where we already have our squeeze chutes, our um, excuse me, our alley system. This is a squeeze chute, um, and alley system is right here.
All right, take a look here. I know you saw us trying to set this down with a John Deere tractor, you know, but you got to do what you can. Had to borrow the, the, the John Deere from our neighbor. And uh, even with that big John Deere, this squeeze shoe is heavy. It's solid and it struggled with that John Deere. I mean, it was, it's, this thing's heavy. So we, we finally got it set, but um, we've got some shimming to do here. We're gonna have to um, balance these out. They're a little uneven, and that's simply because this is an old dairy barn pad. Remember, we tore that old dairy barn down, and then we have set our system on this, and we're gonna use that big pad. It's a big old thick concrete pad that you can tell here. But um, now we've got our complete system here. We've got our tub down here. We've got to finish. Um, and we're gonna put some more bar up. We've, we've, we've built it up a little bit more, made it a little bit tougher. Um, got some thicker pipe on it and we're gonna sheet the rest of it. And we've got to balance these alleys. We're gonna balance the squeeze chutes and make it even. And then we'll be basically pretty much ready to go. So that's good stuff right there. And we're getting a lot closer and very thankful that Doc was able to build this crash gate that you gotta have when you work bison. So, and you'll be like, well, why do you need that? Well, at some point when we do work the bison here, um, you'll understand that and see it. If you want, you can go back and watch some of the footage of when I've taken the bison to the vet. You can see that crash gate on the front of that hydraulic chute and it's super nice and you'll understand why. Even you can go back and watch the sale um, whenever we were working those bison and what that crash gate is used for. So it's gonna be nice once we have ours uh, completed and we can work our own bison right here. Hey, Eleanor. What you doing? Calves are doing good, they're getting big. They're nice and fluffy here in the winter time. See mom, one of the moms, Quapaw, she's still hanging out pretty close. Keeping an eye on her baby as they're going through the weaning process. Still have sick Dakota. Um, she, she's doing okay, she's hanging in there. We're trying to get her recover, gain some weight before we let her back out here with the herd.
hope you guys enjoyed the video today um it's nice just to see these animals and see what they're doing in the middle of the day what do they do with their lives you know we see them in the mornings we see them in the evenings uh checking on them but what do they do in the middle of the day and so you know what it's sometimes it's just it's just fun to sit around and watch these animals um you can see they're being lazy right now they're just hanging out resting um eleanor here is munching on some uh hay so just fun to uh watch these majestic beasts just hang out and and, and chill in the middle of the day and enjoy the sun and the and the cold weather so hope you guys um enjoyed also seeing us lay that hydraulic or sorry not hydraulic i wish it was hydraulic that manual squeeze chute down adding that um last piece that we really need for that handling system and so we're getting we're getting a lot closer so thank you guys for the support thank you for following um just it's fun to be around these cool animals and i'm lucky to be able to do that so if you haven't yet subscribe to us uh, you can follow us on instagram and facebook and you can check Hey guys, it's Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. It is me. Yes, I shaved. I look a little bit different. Hopefully I look younger. So, uh, but um, hope you guys have been enjoying the videos. Um, just, you know, taking care of the bison and taking care of our, our sick mama cow. Uh, so continuing off of that, uh, I think that it's time to put uh, Dakota back with the main herd. We're going to get her off of her calf and start the true weaning process with with um, that calf. So um, I called Doc and, and told her how she was doing. She doesn't, she she's lost a lot of weight, but one thing about her is her energy has been great. Um, it, it's doing a lot better. She's eating like she's supposed to, um, but we're gonna put her back with the herd and see how she does. Um, Doc Parsons from Stratford uh, said we can put her back. It's been over a month and um, you know signs are looking up. We just got to get her back and hopefully her her um, her social level will be fine with back with the main herd and um, she'll start gaining some weight because that's what we need her to do is is uh, make a full recovery and so far she's doing that um, slowly but surely and uh, hopefully we'll get her better. So um, I'm gonna put her uh, back with the main herd. So here we go. So the important part is feed is the key. So we're gonna feed Dakota and the two calves and try to draw them up and then I'll have to separate. This is the difficult part. It's separating um, the calves from the mama cow so we can kick her back with the main herd. We do not want the calves um, in with the main herd because they are gonna do uh, go through that weaning process. So. I'm gonna set some feet out and try to get them up here and open some gates. Let them come to it. So feed, hopefully he's gonna draw them in. That's kind of the key here. Once we get them in, we can separate them. So we're gonna sit here and watch, maybe hide a little bit back here and play normal. And uh, we'll see if they'll come in.
package. Okay, everything has calmed down a little bit. Gave the calves some more feed, calm them down. They were, that blood starts rushing and um, these animals get worked up. And um, 
you know, it's just, it's, you've seen them before get worked up even with a, a tractor out in the middle of the pasture or a, uh, or just any time that you work them, like when we loaded up at Dakota to take her to the vet, these animals, it's something turns them on and, and, uh, and they, uh, they get all worked up about this stuff. But calves, got them calmed down a little bit. We've got them pinned up in our toughest um, part of the corral, uh, just in case they, like you saw, try to get out and you know they'll try to get back to mama so it was really just Dakota's baby that was trying to do that but they're doing good um, hopefully she gets better she can gain some weight back with the herd and um, we uh, get things going back for her one question that I always get um, about these calves is are you going to castrate them no you do not have to castrate bison. Um, nobody really does that. It's not a thing you do in the bison industry. Um, these calves um, are gonna stay here um, for um, almost two years. We'll see how it goes, but we're gonna, these are our first two calves. So we're going to keep an eye on them, take care of them here. Um, they'll be out on some grass eventually so they can graze and, and and live normal we're not just gonna sit here and feed them and fatten them up uh, like a lot of people think that we're gonna do we're not here to fatten these calves up um, to take them to the slaughter uh, but after you know the prime time um, for to um, take a calf to slaughter um, is 18 to 24 months is the prime time so um, almost two years or up to two years but the thing about these bison are is these bulls are not able to breed until they're two um, cattle can breed a little bit quicker than that but bison cannot breed until they're at least two years old and so that's kind of the cutoff line where people have to make a decision whether to breed um, using their, their bulls or they take them um, to a sale they sell them to people or uh, for breeding purposes, um, or you take them to slaughter for meat. So there is some choices or some options for you, but um, these are our first calves. We're gonna see how they look, um, and we'll make a decision after a while and see how they look. You know, we, we may have to keep one, um, or we may sell them to uh, somebody who would like to start their own bison herd, um, or just take them to our annual sale in, in Oklahoma. So we've got options, but to answer a question that I always get is you do not have to castrate them. Um, like I said, um, they don't start breeding until they're two years old. So it's kind of fun to watch um, these animals get all worked up. Um, sometimes when you, when you have to work them and, and move them around from place to place and separate them, it's kind of fun to watch them uh, get that blood rushing and start moving around and acting goofy and whatnot. But also, um, it can be a little scary and a little intimidating because you never know what these animals are going to do. They're very unpredictable. So, but, uh, you know, hopefully things are getting better um, with the calves now that they're going to go through this weaning and um, Dakota is going to get better. So thank you guys for watching. Um, thank you for your comments. Thank you for uh, watching us as we um, just do taking care of the small bison herd. And uh, subscribe to us right here. Um, hit that subscribe button if you guys want to follow us. Um, thank you if you already do. Um, follow us on Facebook and you can follow us on Instagram. Thank you guys. Hey guys, Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back. Um, I've got some things I want to go over with you today. I'm talking about weaning, going to answer some questions that a lot of people had, and and we're going to give you some updates on how uh, the handling system is going and some future things that we're going to do around the Cross Timbers Bison Farm. 
stay tuned with us. Hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, it's Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. So, we are in full bore of the weaning process. Calves are doing great. Um, I bet they probably gained 20 or 30 pounds since we took them to the vet to get their very first vaccinations. Um, mamas have been staying pretty close, uh, but we've got these calves in a uh, one of our smaller lots, and so they're able to stretch out their legs and and have fun and whatnot okay some of you are probably wondering what is the ball doing out there well i thought it would be funny to throw it out there and, and see what the um the bison would do no real reaction nothing i don't think they really cared for it so yes that ball does have a sad face on it um but so one of the questions i got was what's the biggest difference um with weaning like we've um, you know, like a farm like this, like we're doing versus how they wean in the wild. And I think a lot of it has to do with how the wild works, um, um, how nature works. I think that these moms, they go through certain cycles. In the wild, I think mother nature takes its course. You know, once these calves start weaning off of them at, you know, six or seven months, it should be around... Um, if they're having babies in April, May, June, and even July, they can uh, nurse for six months. So you're looking at uh, November, December, early January when the weaning process starts. And naturally, that mom is hopefully pregnant. You know, she's going to get pregnant from uh, during breeding season while she has the calf. And then she loses the calf in the wintertime. And by the time the spring comes around, she's having a calf and she's gonna have to naturally kick that calf off of her. Um, and so that the um, calf that she had the previous year will move on and do its own thing because mama's gotta take care of the new calf that's been born. So another thing I want to talk to you about was the National Bison Association sale and the trophy showcase. So it happens every year in Denver. It's towards the end of January. Last year was my first time to go. Um, I didn't make it quite this year. I thought it was a little bit uh, too risky to leave my wife. I wasn't going to do that considering, uh, you know, she's about 34 or 35 weeks pregnant. I didn't think it was the right idea. So um, anyways, headed to miss it, but that's okay. So, but I want to give you a couple of updates on that that I thought you would probably be interested in. So I wanted to share a couple of prices with you uh, just to give you an idea of people ask me all the time, how much uh, do bison cost? How much does a calf cost? How much does a bull cost or a heifer? And just to give you an idea, the National Bison Association sale at Denver is, is, is kind of a good guide. It's, it's, it's where a lot of some of the best bison that are produced in in the country come to um, show off a little bit and they're sold there. So you can kind of get a good idea of prices. Um, they're a little bit higher because of the type of sale it is. It's the National Bison Association main sale that they have every year. So just to give you a couple of numbers here, um, the grand champion two-year-old bull um, brought about 14,000. Um, matter of fact, I don't even think it was a grand champion. I think it was second place um, from a top producer um, that always comes to the show and sell every year. About 14 grand. Um, yearling heifers. I think the top yearling heifer brought 3,000. 
the um, yearling bull crazy brought uh, grand champion brought twenty thousand um, dollars and then there's the higher end and there's a the lower end and you're going golly that's really expensive um, and yeah it's just a lot like the cattle industry and um, so that kind of gives you a good idea of it but there's a lot of really good animals that come there and last year when I went it was a great experience for me and I'll, I'll try to go every year so um, but anyways just want to share that with you and hope that helps you out and it gives you a good idea of how much do bison cost you ever have any questions or want to do more you want to look into this a lot more you can go to um, the National Bison Association website it's bisoncentral.com and you can even become a member um, I'm not sure exactly how much they all cost I pay an annual member fee but if you ever have any questions you can look on there there's a lot of good stuff and um, just if you're interested in bison and curious you don't even have to own any it's just a really good central kind of central website to go to if you want to check it out you can take a look here this is part of our tub bison will come down there they'll this is going to be curved by the way i know it's straight you're like no you can't do 90 degree angles yes this will be curved we are not finished yet but this gives you an idea of kind of what it looks like and hopefully i know it's been it's been a minute life happens we're all busy and you have a lot going on this takes a lot of work now remember this was a dairy barn we tore it down and we turned this into a bison working handling system so yes it has been a lot of work it is a lot of work when you work full-time as a coach and a teacher husband all those things and you own 10 cabins so we've been very busy and it's hard to get out here and do this and plus my stepdad kevin helps me uh, do a lot of the work on this but we're getting very close and so hopefully pretty soon we got a couple of things left to do on this and finish putting the sheet metal on finish the curve inside there for the tub a couple little things and we'll be ready to rock and that's going to be a really good video i hope that you guys get to see that for our first time um, of us working the bison i'm really excited about it and once we do that once we have that it'll be really really need good your guidance on this i don't know what we should do should we paint the alley system the same color as the squeeze chute or not i need your opinion i thought about painting it black um, and maybe what's some good type of paint? I've heard Rust-Oleum, I've heard Primer. What's the best paint to paint, uh, to put on here? You guys let me know, I really need to know. So check out what I bought. I bought 20, um, 20 foot by four foot panels, pre-made panels. I bought them locally um, from a gentleman uh, and he had several, he's been selling them like crazy. He's had to order a lot more, but um, we got some we've got 20 and what we're gonna do is we are gonna make a corral We have a corral the old existing dairy corral, but we're gonna make a longer tougher one newer one We're gonna set some pipe and we're gonna hang these Pre-made panels on that pipe. We're gonna put a top rail across and it's gonna be about six foot high So that's what we're looking towards and um, We're gonna have a feeding area and an area to hold extra animals and you know for weaning too maybe so we'll see this is a future project i just want to share that with you these are awesome these panels are becoming more and more popular and i actually found them on facebook marketplace you can find just about anything on there and went and talked to the gentleman looked at them and we got them panels and what we're gonna do is we're gonna use these panels for this this is a uh, narrow runway that we've had here for a long time you can see the green grass um, that's because of the bison we never hardly let them in here because just look at this this fencing is not good so you look at this fence and you're like holy crap how does this keep the bison in well you're right I, I, I don't know we keep them happy we keep them fed and watered and so yes this fence right here is not gonna be here very soon. We're gonna turn this into a longer, narrower corral system. It's about 30 feet wide, and we're gonna use this to feed out of. So we're gonna put horse troughs, or horse troughs, bison troughs, feed troughs, whatever you wanna call it. We're gonna put them right along here in a straight line so that the bison can spread out and eat. What I like about them is there's six bars. We're gonna hang them about 
one foot off the ground and so it'll be about five foot high and then we'll also um, put a bar uh, run a top bar across the top of our um, post that we're going to set for our fencing. You dirtied the water. Hey guys, so I hope you enjoyed the video today. I know it was a bunch of random stuff, but you know what? That's part of farming. And uh, there's always something to do on a farm. Um, and those of you who have one or have had that experience, you know there's always something to do on a farm. And um, you know, it's fun to watch this process as we are trying to get full go with the bison handling system, weaning for the first time. Um, it's all a learning process, but. Um, Everything's going good. I think I'm really excited and I'm, I'm hoping and I'm thinking we've got at least three pregnant um, heifers and our uh, cow from last year. So that's a good sign. These are our two new heifers. They can't breed yet. Remember that? Um, you have to be two to breed. Uh, these heifers will be two um, this coming year, um, this spring, and they'll hopefully breed um, come breeding season of this year, um, later August, September, October, um, they'll be um, hopefully bred by Dunbar. So anyways, their bellies are starting to drop. Uh, the ones I was talking about I think are pregnant. Their bellies are starting to get a little bit lower and you can see, um, you can see them just a little bit lower and you can see, um, you know, they're just a little bit bigger. And so it's fun to see that and uh, see them grow. And, you know, maybe when we um, work the bison um, here pretty soon, once the handling system's done, um, we'll do some preg checks and we'll figure out if they're really pregnant or not. So that's really exciting. And we've never done that before here. So um, we may just get that done by our vet, Doc Parsons, and maybe we'll be able to know for sure if we've got babies coming or not. But I think, I think they're pregnant. So um, thank you guys. If you haven't subscribed to us, hit that button, subscribe to us. And thanks for following Cross Timbers Bison. Look us up on Facebook and Instagram. Still have t-shirts, the main t-shirt. It's 70 degrees out here. We're loving it. Thank you guys. Okay, so first things first, I gotta remove this old crappy fence because this is not gonna work at all. We've gotta tear this down, so let's get to work. Hey guys, it's Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back. Um, so I've got a trailer here. I've got it loaded down with some new bison equipment. We've got a uh, 10 foot poly uh, trough that I got. Um, it's nice just to have a couple of extra, just, you know, especially um, the herd is getting a little bit bigger and so it's nice to have extra room for, um, you know, for everybody to eat. And then the other thing I got was a 14-foot gate that I'm going to use uh, for part of our handling system that we're going to um, use for uh, an emergency kickout. Um, and I'll show it to you um, here in just a little bit. And then I've got some concrete. So what I'm going to do today is I am going to start digging some holes 
and set some posts for our corral system that I showed you last uh, in my last video. We're gonna get that started. And so, got some, got some labor to do. I'm gonna dig the holes, uh, you know, using the good old fashioned work hands. And so that's what I'm gonna do and get these posts set so we can start hanging those um, 20 foot panels um, that I showed you in the last video. We're gonna get them hung up and get this corral going while I got this pretty weather. Here we go. Okay, so first things first, I gotta remove this old crappy fence because this is not gonna work at all. We've got to tear this down, so let's get to work. And so that's what's left. That is going to go to the recycle. Now we've just got the fence done, got it all taken out. I'm going to remove some of these T posts, get her taken care of. Okay, one thing I got to do first before I start um, digging holes for this pipe is I got to run a line from our existing pipe down to our new pipe down there. So I'm going to run a string line and then I want to make sure that when I dig these holes and set this pipe, we're in a straight line. Okay, so it's time to get to work. Hold on a second. Somebody came to visit me. What's up, big dog? I may or may not have treats. Old Dunbar. Do you even know what you're named after? One of the greatest movies ever. Dances with Wolves. Kevin Costner. Lieutenant John J. Dunbar, one of my favorite movies ever. I may or may not show it to my students every year. I do teach Oklahoma history, so, um, you know, Native American culture, I love it. And that's a, that's a great movie. Plus, it's got these guys in it. Huh. He just wanted to see what was going on up here working on his new corral. But I hope to gosh he doesn't jack up. Because he's been breaking just about everything. He can flip gates, break uh, feed troughs, gets in the water bucket. Uh, he's not that mean, but he's just being a bull, I guess. Big boy. Huh? There's some more treats. I'm just feeding him some uh, three quarter inch cattle cubes. Some of uh, the cake, as some people call it. Candy is what I call it. They know what it is, and it's their favorite. Just 14% cattle cubes is all they are. Know if you guys noticed or not i had some more company one of the favorites eleanor eleanor came to say hi she's been walking up and down the fence wants some of this green grass and probably wants some of them sugar cubes huh 
Oh, Eleanor. So we're going to use some two and three eighths pipe, oil filled pipe. We're going to use it. I'm going to cut um, eight foot links. We're going to set them in the ground two feet and put them in concrete. So I got to get, I got to get to cutting. Okay, well that's it. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six posts set in cement. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to come back through. We've got these 20 foot apart. We're gonna come back through and drive with a tractor. We're gonna drive the rest in the ground. So we concreted every 20 feet um, of this uh, two and three eighths post right down the line here but the first phase of this corral that we've got here so the boss has been hanging out with me this evening just always curious of what's going on but here we go this is the first phase to work sorry dumbbar hey guys dusty baker with cross timbers bison well Remember those posts I told you we're gonna, um, we're not gonna concrete, I already concreted the, um, every 20 feet we put them in concrete. We're gonna go back through and we're gonna use this John Deere to drive in the other posts uh, that are in between. So um, we'll have a post every 10 foot and uh, you know every 20 foot they're concreted so we're gonna drive the rest of these on there. So I'm very thankful for People like uh, our neighbor, you, you've seen this big green tractor um, in, in quite a few of my videos doing the large handling equipment and, uh, and whatnot, but I really need to give a shout out to our neighbor um, who just lives right next to our farm. His name's Larry Muck. Um, him and his wife are super nice people and um, he never hesitates to, to, uh, to let us do um, use his tractor and so, um, just very thankful for people uh, like them. Yeah, um, you know, when you're starting out as a new farmer, it's it's nice to have people like that so you can get stuff done. And um, when you're moving big equipment and doing big projects, um, it's really nice to have equipment like this. But couldn't do all this without uh, good people um, like Larry. So um, thank you, Larry, for letting us do this and borrow your tractor and bugging you all the time. So thank you. Why am I losing my breath? Because I'm carrying these 30 foot joints and they're heavy. Okay, you guys saw how easy those posts drove in the ground. That's because we've had a lot of rain. It's rained at least once or twice 
um, a week here in southern Oklahoma. So those posts, it didn't take them much to get two fit in the ground. So now we've got them all set. Now we're gonna have the top rail. We've got 30 foot two and three eighths joints. We're gonna put all up and down here as our top rail. And then we're gonna come back and we'll add those um, pre-made panels that we're going to, uh, which is gonna make our corral basically, those 20 foot panels um, that you saw in my last video. So time to get out the cutting torch and welder and get this top rail done. Let's get it done. All right, so we used the tractor, got the post driven in the ground. It went through really easy because this ground is wet, but um, so we also started on the top rail. We've got a big portion of this. Now this is not that big of a corral. It's only like, I don't know, we're, we're doing this first stretch is only 140 feet long, but here we go. We got the top rail started right here. Um, and goes down kind of on this first stretch here. But something I do want to show you gives you an idea of what this is going to look like. Okay, um, we went ahead and hung this up, but what I want you to see is the panel. What's really cool about these um, panels, these um, pre made panels, is they come with these little joints here. Um, and they all have a little nick on them right there, which is awesome. And so just slide this in here and we'll connect our next panel and attach it here. And you can see they're all here. Got a little bead on them right there. We'll slide the other joint over. We're gonna use a, a clamp. Uh, here we'll weld the clamp to the actual two and three eighths um, And that's how we'll attach it Speaking of neighbors another neighbor I want to thank is Russell Allen um, He's another neighbor really close to us um, He's let us borrow pop to finish uh, some projects. He's let us borrow his um, Long trailer like right here is 20 foot trailer to haul some stuff um, I, I got to haul the squeeze chute and the alley system on it and, and some pipe and stuff. So, like I said before, um, having neighbors that have equipment is nice, but the most important part is having really nice neighbors and people that just don't even care, don't want any money or anything. And uh, you just love that and hope that you can return the favor at some point to people like, uh, to people, to people like Larry and Russell to get, have good neighbors like that. So you guys probably know what all I'm talking about, but um, just appreciate those people like that. And um, I'll always tell them thank you. So you've probably noticed there's some, I look a little bit different and there's a, there a gap between the first part of my video and, and the second half of my video. And that's because, um, you know, we had a dramatic change uh, to my wife and myself's life. Um, we uh, brought a baby into this world. Um, on Sunday, February 9th, we uh, brought our little baby girl, mama and baby are doing great and um, life has changed as we know. And um, so I hadn't got to spend as much time out here um, doing all the projects and hanging out with the bison, but that's okay. That's not what's important. It's taking care of that baby girl, but um, I'm falling all over in love again. and and uh i enjoy it and uh, hopefully pretty soon you guys will be able to meet our little girl and uh, introduce you guys to her maybe at some point but um so some changes are are are, are happening or and underway um she came a couple weeks early um but that was expected with uh how mama was going and how she was doing so but anyways hope you guys enjoyed the video and you can see the changes taking place not only in my life you're not seeing it but what you are seeing is we are building this uh, corral for bison and that's always something people ask and talk about you know you have normal fencing which we use um, barbed wire is our exterior fence but um, you know for a corral system we're using this right here 
where there's going to be a lot of traffic and um you know we're going to have these bison in here quite a fit quite a bit and um so you need something tough especially if you're working them and whatnot and this stuff right here these pre-made panels um, are going to do the job once we get everything finished we'll be able to put these bison in this run right here and they'll have a little bit more room so anyways thank you guys for following thank you uh for your support and your comments um hit that subscribe button and follow us along part two we are getting these panels on our post it's exciting once we get this these bison can come in here even though we have this crappy fence we still got to tear out that's okay though we've got the first ridge almost done Okay, as you can tell, we've about got this thing wrapped up. Um, you can kind of see the process of this. That way, we, we, kind of a rhythm we finally got in. Once we got started, we hung the first one way down there and then kind of figured out how to do this and then just had a repetition at it. So Kevin does, he does most welding. He likes to weld. He's probably a better welder than me. He's had more experience, but I can weld. I promise, I do some welding, you just don't see me welding on the video, so just want you guys to know that.
and that's it. The fence is done. Fence. This ain't no fence. It's corral. Look at that. It was a crappy fence at one point, but we've got a full, long one side of this corral done. And um, I think it's time to let the bison in and see what they think. Um, they probably won't even notice, but it's time to let them in. Let's get to using this thing. got the bison in here and I think they're happy eating this green grass that they haven't had in a while but it is finally done we finally have one side of this corral built and I think it's gonna be awesome I'm super excited about it and I'm very happy with the way it went and uh, how great it looks Pretty easy to put these panels on with these clips that we have um, once we got them set once we got the first one set and we kind of got in a rhythm. It, they were pretty easy to put on and we're pretty satisfied with them. Um, once you got the post set and the first panel on there, we, we got them on there pretty quick. And so that was pretty nice uh, to do. And we're excited about using these in the future. We obviously have more, we still have one more stretch to go. If you're interested in doing that, maybe it's not bison, maybe it's cattle or whatever, but um, they're pretty easy and I, I like using them and I think we're gonna be pretty satisfied with what we have here. Um, and you know, maybe we'll use some more in the future. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, Bison seem to be happy they found some green grass that they haven't got in a while. So um, thank you guys for um, following. And if you haven't, hit that subscribe button and follow us along and follow us on Facebook and Instagram as well. Thank you guys. Somebody else I need to thank. In my last video, I thanked a couple of neighbors. Somebody else I need to thank, a lot of you may know, is my brother-in-law, Daniel Arms. He's let us use this water um, as well for a long time. And uh, once again, he's one of those uh, good neighborly um, people that, uh, that uh, let you borrow some of their stuff. And thank you, Daniel, from Arms Family Homestead for letting us uh, use your awesome welder to uh, do all these projects. Thank you, brother-in-law.
guys, it's Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Go ahead and excuse me, it is super windy out here. And, uh, but, oh, looky here. This guy. This video is gonna be about this guy and a couple others. Um, I'm gonna show you up close what's on his horns. Um, there's some red, there's some orange, and I'm gonna explain to you why he has that on his horns. So you guys know, I love Dunbar, our bull, our main man. And he's a good bull. Well, I hope he is. If we don't have babies this spring, I'm gonna be a little upset. But this knucklehead, I tell you what, he is a mess. So this is what he always does, is this right here. The troughs, that's a brand new trough. And uh, he is always dragging it out and, uh, He's beating all kinds of feed troughs up and he keeps dragging this all the way out here from this lot to here. And look who's coming. Look at the herd. They saw me out here. I thought I could sneak out here and grab that feed trough in time, but I didn't get to. They saw me. All it takes is one and guess who it was right here, Eleanor. She always pays attention. Here comes the herd. And so I'm gonna feed and then uh, try to get that feed trough back because we need room to eat. Today I want to talk to you about this knucklehead right here. This guy, Dunbar. He has just been, like I said, a knucklehead. He has destroyed feed troughs. He's knocked gates off the hinges. And I want to talk to you about that today. I've got some really good footage for you. Not only Dunbar, but probably one of our more aggressive, this is why she has her name, Bella Star, right there. I've got some good footage I want to show you guys today of just bison being bison, I guess. And, um, you know, he's not a mean bull, but I guess he's just bored or he's all tensed up or something. Let's get to showing it to you. So I got to go out in the pasture again and retrieve this feed trough. The feed trough looks a little bit different today. It doesn't have the feed trough in it. So this is what's left of the trough. I'm sorry about the wind. 
it's it's Oklahoma guys I, I apologize it, the wind always blows in Oklahoma some days a little bit stronger than the others but so I don't know what's going on with the bison I mean we know that they can be naturally aggressive but I don't know what's going on with them lately uh, Bell Star has been aggressive um, Dunbar's destroying the feed trough and the gates and whatnot we're gonna have to bulk up on our hinges a little bit more but I don't know what's going on. I, I don't know if they're anxious for summertime to get that green grass. I don't know what's going on. But you know what? Relatively, my bison, if you pay attention, are pretty calm compared to some videos out there and some footage that you've seen um, in some of the national parks like Yellowstone and whatnot. Mine are pretty calm. That's because they're used to people um, like me and my family. So that's why um, ours are pretty calm. So that's a good thing. I've talked about why it's important for them to be around people because we're going to work them and we feed them and whatnot. And when we do that, we want them to be used to us so it makes life a whole lot easier. You can see all the orange or red from the feed trough Dunbar's been beaten up. You can always tell what he's marking on, whether it's a gate or a feed trough. Our feed trough are red and our, <laughs> like that one right there, and the uh, gates are orange. And so this is what Dunbar does. I mean, look at that. Bent hinge bent hinge and this is what he likes to do is knock the gates off the hinge
So yesterday I decided to uh, fly the drone up. It was a really pretty evening. The bison were down in the, the bottom pasture. And so when I did that, um, this is the first time ever, Bell Star. Oh, told you about this aggression. I don't know what's going on. Anyways, Bell Star did not like my drone. <laughs> it was really funny. I've never seen him do this, but she was in, in not a good mood. I don't know. Maybe, I think she's pregnant. She's, she's huge. This is the biggest I've ever seen her. Um, obviously, she's carrying a baby. baby. Uh, signs we should we should start seeing those signs but anyways watch this this is this is really good she did not like this drone So as most of you can tell, I'm going to have to invest in some heavy duty feed troughs. But I don't know why he just picks this one feed trough. Such a knucklehead. Well, the bulls are having fun. Um, anyways, but uh, yep, going to have to invest in some heavier feed troughs. But uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video today. Just to see some of these behaviors by the, some of these bison. You never know what you're going to get. Um, just watch some of my videos. You put a tractor in the pasture or a drone in the air. Um, it doesn't matter. You never know what you're going to get out of these bison, but you got to love them. They're full of character, these social animals, but hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, baby is doing great, by the way. She is healthy and mama is doing great. Thank you for all the congratulation comments. I love it. You know, it's a big, big uh, change in life and I'm absolutely love, loving, loving it. Love being a dad so far and my wife is awesome and she's uh she's a great mother and um she's even a better wife so thank you guys for following us thank you for all the positive comments and um keep following us along with a small uh bison farm in southern oklahoma thank you guys